some of you have been in a battle you feel like you've almost been left alone but as the Word of God says in Psalms 23 that he's prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies I remember one time I was in a very intense spiritual battle and I was in a prayer closet praying and I heard the voice of the Lord Jesus call my name and all of a sudden he took me onto a battleground and I was standing there with a sword in my hand and a shield in the other and I heard my name called and I turned around and he was sitting at a table in the middle of the battlefield and he was calling me to come and sit down He's calling you to come and sit down. He's calling you to come and rest right now. Some of you, you you've, been, you've been so keyed up that you haven't felt like you could rest. But Jesus is calling you to a place of rest. Just go to Him right now and just sit down at the table. Just sit down. This is a place of nourishment. This is a place of comfort. This is a place, as Lori was speaking about, of healing. It's the presence of Jesus. When he looks into you with his eyes, he looks into the depths of your soul. When he looks into you with his eyes, it illuminates everything about who you are. And the healing begins to go forth and the big healing begins to flow because he sees in every crevice and every corner and every crack of who you are. And he lets his blood come in and fill that place. hard to get away from his cleansing flood it's hard to get away from his cleansing blood because even at that table if he reaches his hand out towards you if you take him by the hand your fingers are right by the nail scars you can't get too far from the blood that cleanses and washes and restores and delivers so we're just in the presence Jesus we're just in your presence, Jesus. We call out to you. We cry out to you. Lord, Lord, this is how we fight our battles. Lord, in the middle of the enemy's camp, in the middle of the battle, in the middle of the storm, Lord, we just sit down at the table with you. We just sit down and we rest. We just sit down and we rest. Some of you, you don't even want to admit to Him that you're weary. You don't even want to admit to Him that you're tired. But He sees it in your eyes. And would you just say, Jesus, I'm a little weary. I'm a little tired. Just right now, I need your touch. I need your touch. Oh, hallelujah, Lamb. Hallelujah, Lamb. Everywhere you see the table of the Lord, everywhere you see the supper of the Lord, you also see disciples that are washing feet. And there's a foot washing going on right now. There, your walk, your walk has been marred. Your, you, you, your, you, your feet have become marred from the walk that you've been. But the Lord is allowing your feet to be washed right now. It's cleansing the walk that you've had in your past is being washed and being cleansed he's he's giving you a new walk he's given you a new way he's given you a new song there's even an anointing of oil fresh oil right now he anoints my head with oil surely my cup runs over if you need that cleansing and that washing, would you receive it right now? Some of you, your mind, your mind's been so cluttered. Your mind's been so cluttered. You almost feel like you're going crazy. But would you allow Jesus just to, just to lay hands upon you now and wash your mind and 
restore your mind right now with the healing balm of Gilead, the oils of joy, the oils of gladness, the oils of the Holy Ghost, the fresh crushing of Gethsemane. Be placed upon your mind right now. A renewing of the mind, a renewing of the mind. All over this place, a renewing. Some of you men, you haven't wanted to admit that you were weak, but there's a renewing of your mind right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We just run to you, Jesus. We just run to you, Jesus. We just love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Pastor, I believe that the uh, pastors visit us today and there's other men here too. I believe Say that today. again. I didn't hear you, bro. I, I, I believe that regarding the pastor that is visiting us today and there's other men as well that that uh, God wants to tell you he's not done with it yet. Hallelujah. He's not. Hallelujah. He's not done. He's got Lord more for you to do. It's time Step into that place. Use his strength, and he will finish the work. You are not done. You are not done. You are not done. There's just healing taking place right now. There's there's a presence of His mercy and love. It's just being poured upon us. Lord, we receive it. Some, there's a, somebody in here, you have been under condemnation. And even when I say there's a presence of His mercy and His love, you're literally trying to push away the mercy and push away the love because you think in your heart, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. And I break that spirit of condemnation. That's not of God. We cast it down at the pit where it belongs. And I pray, Father, Lord, the mercy and the unquenchable love of God pour into their soul now. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. You've been born again. You've been born again. You've been filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit and His power. But there's an area in your life you've been unable to forgive. And the Lord is saying right now, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and let that the, the blood flow into that area right now. Let that blood flow in to that place that you've been unable to forgive yourself. Hallelujah. 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 Just a spirit of restoration. Some of you, not all of you, but some of you need to take somebody by the hand next to you. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. Father, I pray the restoration, the restoration that can only come from you, Lord. The restoration that can only come from you. Lord, I step into it now. I step into it now. I step into it now. Wounds that you did not bring upon yourself, but you are paying the price. I pray restoration now. I want to say that again. Wounds that you did not bring upon yourself, but you are now paying the price. I pray restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. Balm of Gilead come. Worthy, worthy. Even when I said that, if that was somebody near you and you know what's going on in their life, just take them by the hand and begin to pray for them right now. Just begin to pray. I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. 
doing ministry right now. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You're worthy. I pray a, a, an anointing of the Holy Ghost. You, some, Someone is here today and you feel like God could never use you because of what has happened in your past. But the Spirit of the Lord is here to say to you, there is an acceleration coming. That which the enemy meant for evil, the Lord is going to make for the good. The pit that the enemy dug, he falls into it himself. God is saying, step into the call that I've called you into. Step into that. Step into that. Some of you would say, God, I don't even know what that is. But the Word of God says in Thessalonians, this is the will of God, your sanctification. So the more you press into God, the more He will reveal His will in your life. And so we just press in. Hallelujah. We just love you, Jesus. We just love you, Jesus. We just love you, Jesus. There's none like you. There's none like you. There's none like you. You're here right now and you're looking into your soul and you're going, I know I'm not right. I know I'm not right. I know I'm not right. I want to make things right. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to make Him my Lord and Savior. If that's you, you don't even have to come here. Just raise your hand right now and put it down. I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Just raise your hand. Put it down. Anybody here? Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just right now where you're at. Where you're at right now, say, Jesus, come into my life right now and cleanse me. I forsake and I renounce every sin that I've ever been doing. I throw it at the foot of the cross. And I ask Jesus you to wash me and you to cleanse me and you to renew me. Lord Jesus, dwell in my spirit now. Lord Jesus, come into my spirit and cleanse me in your blood. And I say, Jesus, I open the door of my heart. Dwell in me now. Dwell in me now. Dwell in me now. Dwell in me now, now, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. Gives me beauty for ashes. Oil of joy for morning. Garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Gives me beauty for ashes. Oil of joy for Garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. 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 Look into my 
but he still has a table for you. There's a, a place of refreshing. There's a place of rest. There's a place of peace. Father, we just go to that right now. We just... And in the midst of that rest, there's a healing when we allow him to... In fact, listen, this is the scripture I was going to read. Now watch this. The Bible says that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. The word judgment there in the Greek literally means a decision. It means a decision. And it means a function or it means an effect. Now watch this. What does that mean? That when the judgment of the Lord comes, it's not that I just am affected by judgment as much as I make the decision. Are you hearing me? that I'm going to judge myself. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 says, for if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And so I'm at this place of saying, Lord, look into my eyes. And Lord, let your love penetrate my soul and cleanse the things that are unseen, Lord, even now. <laughs> cleanse the things that are unseen, Lord. Lord, I choose even now. Lord, I know that your word says that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. But at that place, Lord, I don't want to be affected through the judgment. I don't want to be a recipient of the judgment. But I want to be a function of your presence. And I want to be a function that says, Lord, I judge myself today. Lord, I look into my own heart and I say, wash me, Jesus. Come on, church. Just wash me, Jesus. <laughs> Just wash me, Jesus. Just wash me. I was talking to my son-in-law the other day. We went hunting. And uh, it's not about hunting. It's about fellowship. And I don't know how we got on to this point, but we were talking about 2 Chronicles 7.14. How many can help me with 2 Chronicles 7, 14? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And, and we were going down the road in the dark and I, we were talking about that verse. If my people that are called by my name and we thought, well, look at, now think about this. God doesn't mess things up. Even though in my arrogance, sometimes I question the way he worded things in the Bible. Did you hear what I just said? If my people call by my name, watch this, will humble themselves and what? Pray. And then what's the next part? Seek my face. And then what's the next part? turn from their wicked ways and I'm like no 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 God you got that messed up what they what you need to say is if my people would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face come on and pray then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land and we were talking about that and he goes you know it is interesting that they said it like that and he goes, maybe it's because, isn't this awesome when you get into fellowship? He said, maybe it's because that the more we seek his face, I go, you're on to something right now. You're on to something. You smell like dough urine, but you're on to something. Maybe if it's, 
if we seek His face and we press into His presence, the more we see our wicked ways. The more that we get into His presence, the more all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I remember one time as a younger man, I remember one time that the Holy Spirit, as I was seeking the Lord, the Holy Spirit just looked at me and said, your attitude's wrong. Just driving down the road, I'm repenting of an attitude that I didn't know I even had. The more I press into His presence, the more in love, in, in tenderness that He deals with me. Amen? You know what it says? It says in the Bible, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. The goodness. The goodness. Some of us, we only see Him as a, a, as a, a violent God or a judging God. But His loving tenderness leads me into that place of, Lord, wash me and cleanse me. Amen? Can I say to you, we have had a very unique weekend. This did not happen in the first service, but it happened last night. <laughs> Amen? And all I want to say to you guys is this. If I can just share this. If you looked at my notes, okay, the Bible says he uses the foolishness of preaching to save the lost. And if you looked at my my notes you would see that I said the days of a commercialized church are over so all the gimmicks and all the hoopla is over I went to a conference and they said if you want to grow your church have a candlelight Christmas Eve service Put a cable on your steeple and have the Grinch rappel down off the steeple every hour on the hour. And that'll grow your church. And listening to that, I thought to myself, God in heaven, is that why Jesus went to the cross and died? Where the Grinch could rappel down a steeple? Absolutely not. Gone are the gimmicks. We're coming into a season that God's calling us to be real. Amen? We're coming into a season where God is... There's, there's coming, I, I had somebody come to me last night after service and I didn't preach and they said, the job I have in Butte, I, I experience a lot of persecution and I experience a lot of chiding because of my faith. And I looked at them and I said this and I made this point in the first service, a suffering Christian or a persecuted Christian is a committed Christian. Go to, go to, 1 Peter 4, verse 19. Therefore, let those who what? According to the will of God, do what? See, a persecuted, somebody that's getting chided for their faith, somebody that's being challenged for their position and their stands. Listen, the more you experience suffering, the more you experience a form of persecution, guess what happens to you? The more committed you become. Go to the same chapter, verses 1 and 2. Same chapter, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since Christ did what? What happened to our Savior? What happened to the one we run hard after? Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, what are we to do? Arm ourselves with what? The same mind. For he who has what? In the What happens to him? When, when some chiding comes when persecution comes when suffering comes we run we run we run my daughter Bailey always loved her mama I mean she loved me Joe but she, she loved her mom and uh she was about three months old, and I'd go, come here, sweetie. And she'd go, mm. she'd, you know, and I'm like, you know what, God, you've got a sense of humor, but this is ridiculous. This is my child. You know, I told you my voice scares babies, you know. Come here, sweetie. Mm. 
little bald headed, little girl bald headed. All my children didn't grow hair till they were over a year old. My oldest daughter, Remington, we would have her in a pink onesie with a pink rose on the onesie. And people would see her in the grocery store and go, he's the cutest little boy. And I, she's a girl. He's such a cute little boy. It's a girl. After about six months, Kathy, he's the cutest boy. Yep, he sure is. I wanted her to come to me. I wanted her to to run to daddy. I, I wanted her to hug daddy. Little baby. Just little, little baby. And it was on a Sunday night. I know this is going to shock some of you, but we used to go to church every Sunday night. The Holy Spirit would start moving in church services at 10 o'clock at night, and I'd go, Mom, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. She'd go lay down on the pew, son. I'll, I'll put you in the car when we're done. <laughs> Anybody remember those days? Sunday night, church service is over. I'm, I'm unlocking the front door of our house. And a bad thunderstorm's coming in. Bad thunderstorm, Kathy. Brenham, Texas, South Texas. Bad thunderstorm's coming in. And as I'm unlocking the door, my wife's holding that little baby, little three, four-month-old baby in her arms. And all of a sudden, a lightning bolt goes, boom, down the street. And when it did, she went, Dah! and I just dropped the keys and just grabbed her. <laughs> you right I looked at my wife and I go you get out of here she's hugging me right now <laughs> I said that to say when there's a lightning bolt that goes boom we run to the arms of daddy we run a run to the arms of daddy papa god abba father I just sense in my spirit God's calling us to run to him today. Amen. Don't you feel that? Don't you feel his love and his presence? So Lord, we just run to you. This what a Lord, we 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 Lord don't want to take for granted your presence ever. Ever we don't want to take for granted your presence. Lord, we just run to you today. Lord, we, your sons and daughters, the sheep of your pasture, Lord, we just, Lord, we come to you. You're the good shepherd. You are the shepherd. And we just come to you, Jesus. Lord, lead us to green pastures. Lead us beside still waters. But we just run to you. Lord, we come through to you we come Jesus you're the gate and we come to you Jesus we don't we won't we don't want to be an imposter we don't want to go over the wall Lord you're the gate you're the door you're the bread we come to you Lord it may look like we're surrounded we're surrounded by your presence and we say Emmanuel 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 God with us hallelujah now would you take somebody by the hand and would you bless them today would you bless it may be your spouse it may be a friend it may be your son it may be a daughter would you just I mean, really speak a word of blessing over them today. Father, we declare blessings of God. The blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. Father, I pray a blessing over David and Liam Nisa. Nelson, right now. Right now. Right now. I pray a blessing on you, Liam, right now in the name of Jesus. Liam, I want you to say... God bless my daddy. Would you just say, God bless my daddy. Right now, just say it to him. Lord, I pray a blessing on my daddy. A blessing on my daddy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Jimmer, I pray a blessing over your spirit, soul, and body. And I pray that your rehab would be fast. I pray that you would not struggle. I pray that your body, I just speak life into your body. Blessings into your body. Father, I pray for Dolores. I pray for her shoulder and her arm. And I pray she would have a quick recovery, Lord, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You love the Lord? <laughs> Isn't God good? God's so good. God's so good. Hallelujah. You love the Lord? Listen, I'm not going to read this to you today. I have, you asked for it. Oh, I, I have a letter here that I wrote. It's just a template. You may want to use this. You may not like it. You may get a few ideas from it. But this is a, basically it says the document is being, to whom it may concern, this document is being presented to you today as a religious exemption and civil right violation letter to the COVID-19 vaccination. Some people work at Fort Harrison that go to this church. There's some situations where the vaccine is, if you've had the vaccine, God bless you. I'm not against that. But I am against the government mandating it when they didn't mandate it to the post office and they didn't mandate it to the Senate and their staffers. They didn't mandate it to Congress and their staffers. They didn't mandate it to companies of 25 employees. Come on. I mean, if it's really, if it's really a safety issue, and here's what I don't understand. I'm starting to preach and I'm staying. I got to quit. What blows me away is guess what happened yesterday all over the United States of America? Something I get excited about every week. NCAA college football. <laughs> Woo, howdy Aggie. My daddy was an Aggie. My granddaddy was an Aggie. And my great, great granddaddy rode a donkey in the Civil War. I said, howdy, Aggie. Okay, anyway. <laughs> they had 70,000 people there. Nobody had a mask. Come on, come on. All over the nation, thousands, 50, 60,000 people in stadiums. Nobody's wearing a mask. Nobody's being mandated to wear a vaccine. Come on. And then we're being, so if you want to get this, it's just a template letter. You can read it. Uh, if you want to use this at work, go ahead and do so. God bless you. Amen. Stand with me all over this place. God bless you today. Listen, 5 o'clock for Assembly of God. They're going to be showing again. What is the, the video? Roe v. Wade video uh, at First Assembly of God. And we just bless all of you that have been watching on, online today. We bless you in the name of the Father. Can I just speak an erotic blessing over you today? The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord calls his face. We were singing about his face, that his eyes are looking into the crevices of your soul. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. It calls his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace. In the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody's hand. Shake their hand. God bless you.